Well, that was uh, certainly something as the Minnesota Wild officially now eliminated from postseason contention following a 5-2 to two loss to the Colorado Avalanche that just further underscored just how far away the Minnesota Wild are from hitting those top levels of talent. We'll talk about Nathan McKinnon literally skating past everybody on those on- <laughs> And uh, we'll play a little bit of uh, are they worth keeping or is it time to move on? On tonight's Locked on Wild postcast, again, the Minnesota Wild officially eliminated from postseason contention. So let's talk about it. You are Locked on Wild postcast, part of Locked on Minnesota on the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. It's over. It is officially now time to look ahead to the offseason as the Minnesota Wild officially eliminated from postseason contention tonight following a 5-2 to two loss to the Colorado Avalanche. Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti here tonight. And Alex, we didn't really learn anything new here in this game tonight. Honestly, it just was more so a further um it was more so just a further solidification of the fact that this team just they've they've got some work to do to uh, get to this level where these other teams in the Western Conference that are in the postseason picture are at right now. And it's funny you get you get both ends of the the spectrum because you have the um, you have the game against the Winnipeg Jets where the Wild just got pushed up and down the ice. And you have the game tonight against the Avalanche where the Wild just can't catch anybody. Like, it's, it's all issues. Like, <laughs> size, speed, skill. You need all of it at this point. And so I hope, and I'm sure the reactions are one of two ways tonight people happy that it's officially over that the chase is done and um it's finally over there are people that are disappointed that we will not see the postseason here uh after this season honestly for me it's just relief at this point like it it has been a very winding road this year very winding road and um it we now finally know that at the end of the regular season the ride stops and the heavy lifting begins of getting to the off season and trying to fix this yeah we talked about we've been <laughs> we've been screaming it to you know for for weeks that uh you know it's just way too hard to climb so many different teams and uh you know, it just, it, it never felt like a playoff team. And, um, you know, it, there was holes in every, every part of their game and the goaltending, <clears throat> it was a big reason why Dean Evison got fired. And, uh, yeah, the, the number one talker, well, I mean, we'll talk about it later, but, uh, you know, it's, it has to be the biggest talker is the goaltending. You're going to keep Gus. Cause he had another horrendous performance tonight. Um, so, and like, I'll, I'll step in right there because mm-hmm. like, I'm willing to, I'm willing to throw Gustafson a bone <laughs> in this performance because on all three of those goals that Nathan McKinnon scored, he just legitimately skated directly past, like he hit 25 miles an hour on the third That's... goal. <laughs> he had, Jonas Brodine, Brock Faber, Jake Middleton. He had all of them looking like they were in quicksands and making saves. Making saves against guys like that is not easy. But let's also keep in mind that we have seen the entire body of work for Philip Gustafson this yeah. season. And as many times as there have been games where you're like, hey, he's maybe starting to figure it out, then there are performances in which it seems like he kind of goes back to square one. And so you're 100% right. I had the uh, 
the graphic from Jay Fresh today in which it talked about basically if particular teams had league average goaltending and league average finishing where they would be at in the standings. And if the wild had league average in both of those categories, they would have a hundred points already. They'd be in the postseason. If they just had gotten league average goaltending right. and league average finishing also in that same graphic, if Edmonton got both of those same things too, they'd have 120 points right now. Like <laughs> it's, <laughs> It is just crazy how we're not asking for much. We're not asking for like Vesna caliber like last year. You're just asking for league average. Right. And the Wild have not been able to get it. They didn't get it at the beginning of the season. Got Dean fired. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't just Gus. Let's let's be clear. It, I mean, Flurry was was horrible at the beginning of the season, too. And he he got better as as the season went al went along, but Gus Gus stayed the same. And you know, like I mentioned, it uh, you know, I, I don't think he was prepared well enough to be you know a full one A goalie. Um, and you know, if he does come back, you know, he's going to have to figure that out, get in better shape, and yeah, man, we'll see. But uh, but it's tough. like it, it also it's not in, it's not a hundred percent on the goalies. Right. Like we, we saw it again. Kirill Kaprizov and Matt Boldy scored tonight. Kirill doesn't it. quit. He doesn't quit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's un, it's unbelievable. He, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and good, good on Boldy too. He's getting close to the 30. So, um, that, yeah, uh, he really turned it around after Dean got fired. So credit to John Hines for helping him get there too. So, yeah, he's on, he's on like, he's second on the, the team in, basically every metric since, which is exactly where you would hope that he would be on a team that includes Kirill Kaprizov. And so, you know, there's a, there's a lot to unpack. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of folks in the comments already. Like let's talk about the fact that it's 1143 at night and we've got 40 people in here um, hanging out. Thanks ready, everybody. Ready to talk it we out. Have, we have somebody from Moscow watching too, which is just awesome. So and maybe yes, get, we're worldwide. Yes, Hoptics. I am I am in funeral garb since <laughs> the season is officially now going to end on April 18th. So I I don't have a ton of black in my closet to uh to feature. So it's um it, it's basically workout gear at this point, which is I which means I had to shake a uh I just shake a little dust off it. Uh, <laughs> Wanted to get it presentable. So five to two loss again. It's fitting that it was the avalanche to you know to you know create uh, uh, the elimination. And it was just another instance in which the Wild were not able to. I got to pull up the Russo tweet because he has been following this. Um, he's been following this all season, and he. He had the tweets in which um, it, it has the record for. Yeah. And you, and you posted it too. Yeah. Oh, 10 and one <laughs> yeah, just, against the combination of Colorado, Winnipeg and Dallas this season. The only game in which you got it to OT was against the Colorado Avalanche. Beyond that, um, it's it's just like we've seen this all on display pretty much all season. Like, again, we didn't learn anything new in this game tonight. We just saw a further underscoring of uh, of how things have played out all year. Although I got to say, hey, by the way, can can you pull up the time on ice? I want to I want to see what Goligoski and, and Merrill finished with, because, you know, Jeremy again brought it up the. <laughs> Eleven on seven. Uh, why? Yeah, why? I got to kick out. I got to kick out of that. Like in an absolute, like if you don't win this game, your season is over. Game, <laughs> you're willingly throwing eleven and seven out there. Like, <laughs> um. Okay, so here's what we had. Kirill played twenty five minutes, forty five seconds. He had a goal. He had four shots. 
Uh, also had a penalty. He also was a minus four. But then again, who wasn't a minus in this game? Um, Jewel Erickson Eck, or actually Matt Boldy was next with ice time. He had 23-18. A goal, and assist, three shots, two blocks. He also had a penalty and a takeaway. Uh, and was also two of two in the faceoff circle. So Boldy, 23-18. Jewel Erickson Eck had 22-28. Five shots, two blocks, 10 out of 17 in the faceoff circle. Uh, who's next? Oh, my God. There are a lot of single-digit numbers. There are a lot of single-digit numbers here tonight. Matt Zuccarello, 21-30. Two shots, minus two. Uh, he also had two assists. And had a hit, had a takeaway, and a giveaway as well. After that, Freddie Goudreau, 13 16, no shots. Marcus Johansson, 15 49, one block. <laughs> no shots. No shots, though. The cardio boys were fire. Yeah, it was it was just a it was just a masterclass for those that have not um, have not had consistent contributions over the season. Um, the one that I take the most issue with, Ryan Hartman had fifteen twenty two. He had a shot, two blocks, two hits, and a takeaway, and was seven out of twelve in the faceoff circle. So here's your here's your fourth line tonight. Murat Huznadinov, 9 minutes, 44 seconds, one face-off. Mason Shaw, 8 minutes, 13 seconds, one shot, one penalty, one face-off. Vinny Letary, 8.36, and three face-offs. So I don't get any portion of that. Jake Lucini, I guess, is no longer playing, which is something but um yeah i and then on defense you had brock faber with 26 minutes 27 seconds then jonas brodine 2041 zach bogosian 2019 jake middleton 1641 declan chisholm 1419 john merrill 829 alex goligoski 625. So I, 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 I like you didn't get a thing from either of those two guys. So I guess what's the point of throwing <laughs> one of those defensemen in instead of a forward? Like I just, I just don't understand. I just don't get why you would willingly put yourself in that spot in a game that you absolutely had to have in order to keep your season going. You're throwing yourself in with a disadvantage, disadvantageous, definitely not a word, but I'm going <laughs> to stick to it. You threw yourself in with a disadvantageous lineup willingly. I know Zuccarello left practice early today. Um, and there was some questions as to if he was going to be able to play. But he did. I just, I don't know. I just don't get it. But it's the perfect metaphor for how this season has gone is that in the biggest moment, right. before Panic. the game even starts, you do something where you're just like, hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah. And Adam Beckman didn't play. Yeah. On the road, you know, in the biggest game of the season, you know, <laughs> uh, just, uh, just crazy. Yeah. I, uh, I don't get it. So um, let's let's do this before we break, and then we'll uh, we'll get to questions because we have a real good one here um, as we now start to transition to the off season. But uh, again, I'll put these on screen for the uh, the wonderful people on YouTube for the audio listeners. Uh, let's roll through what we had here tonight. Colorado had thirty two shots on goal to twenty two for the Minnesota Wild. Both teams scored. On the power play tonight, Avs were one of four on the power play. Wild were two of five. 29 to 26, the Wild had the edge in faceoffs. Whoop-de-doo. 
uh, penalty minutes, 10 for the Avs, 8 for the Wilds, and 14 hits for Colorado, 7 for the Minnesota Wilds. Uh, by the way, Brandon Duhame tonight, 12 minutes, 58 seconds, and uh, he had four hits, including being involved in a little bit of a scrum. He didn't. He wasn't the one that actually punched uh, Jewel Erickson Eck, but he was right in the mix of a little scrum at the uh, in the later stages of the game. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, what do you say about Nathan McKinnon? Three goals, one assist. He was a plus four. He had 10 shots on goal by himself. He's a maniac. Every, <laughs> I said he was going to get his cookies tonight and he, uh, you know, he got his, uh, he got, he got them. And uh, it just, it, he, he makes, uh, he makes defensemen look like they're skating in quicksand. <laughs> it's like they strap the boots that. on and, and they're skating in, in the, in the quicksand. So um, yeah, it, uh it, it's crazy how big of a gap there is between not only those top three teams, but uh, just the, the Avs themselves. It's crazy. And they, the Avs don't even have like Dominic Hasek type goaltending either, which is scary. They're just going to bulldoze teams, you know, McKinnon and, uh, you know, Ratanen. They're just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a heck of an operation. Joe Sack and Scott running for sure. You, and you want to talk about even the three teams ahead of the wild in the stand. Well, there are more than three, but the top right. three in the division. So the Avs just. And Hellbuck's not going anywhere anytime soon. It doesn't seem like it seemed like they were going to maybe trade him, but how can you after the season he's had? And gosh, Jake Gottinger is only 25. When, when I looked that up, I was like, oh my God. Uh, it He's got another. Uh, 10, 10 plus years of dominance in the division. It's it's scary, <laughs> at least. How about that draft? They got Ottinger, Robertson, and Heiskanen all in the same draft. I mean, Dallas, Dallas doesn't miss. No, and Dallas also has nine players with 50 plus points this year. The Wild have four. Yeah. They've got like six guys with 20 plus goals. The Wild have <laughs> four. <laughs> I think so. There just there just is a lot that uh, needs to happen between right now and the start of next season, and we are going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to talk about it in detail, obviously, all off season. But there are some real good questions floating in the. Uh, the chat here. So I want to get to all of these because um, there was a question about who would you like to, who would you like to move on from? Who would you replace them from in Iowa? Who would you replace them with in Iowa? Um, temperature of Bill Guerin's seat right now. There's a lot of tasty morsels in the comments. So let's get to that. Um, Minnesota Wild lose tonight. Five to two, it's over. Playoff contention is officially over as of right this second. So where do we go from here? Big theme for the next couple of weeks here on Locked on Wilds. But for right now, we'll take a short pause and we'll come back with more here on tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. It's over. Minnesota Wild lose five to two to the Colorado Avalanche. More to come after this. Tonight's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. It is playoff time in the NBA. Minnesota Timberwolves will get a chance to experience that joy. Minnesota Wild will not. Baseball is also in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. And get this, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. So you can, if you're in a state in which gambling is legal, you can go bet on the Minnesota Wild against the Vegas Golden Knights on Friday nights. If they win, if they lose, 
you get $150 in bonus bets to use on the rest of the Major League Baseball season. Stanley Cup playoffs getting underway. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs and slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Tonight's Locked on Wild postcast also brought to you by Sleeper. We are down to the final handful of games in the NHL season. And with the Wild now officially eliminated from postseason contention, you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick weather. Players such as Nathan McKinnon. Boy, I hope you took him in your sleeper lineup today. Also, Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, or Connor McDavid will record more or less than their sleeper projections in eight player stat categories. If you correctly pick all eight, you can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. All it takes is 60 seconds or less to set your lineup, but you can also play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, and college football on Sleeper 2. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to tonight's Locked on Wild postcast. It's over. Minnesota Wild officially eliminated from postseason contention here tonight with this loss. They now on the season are 37, 31, and 10, or 37 and 41 for the layperson. We've got a lot of good comments here in the comment section, as we always do. 61 strong listening to Thank you, everybody. this postcast, even after a West Coast game after a loss in which Nathan McKinnon was just a hamster in a wheel running circles around the entirety of the decor. The dog was hungry tonight, and he uh, he ate. He big time woof, woof. ate. Uh, I want to start with the first thing that I saw in scrolling up to the top. Let's get it is dead on. We don't need. We don't need to see these just staggering levels of minutes for the top level guys the rest of the season. And look, it's it's naive Give to Krill think- a, a break, oh, he- man. It's naive to think that these guys are simply not going to play. Right. They're going to play. Like, as much as we'd like to see the likes of some of these prospects get time, like, the guys that are on this roster are still going to play. But what you can do is, for the guys that are in the lineup that are nursing injuries, is you can get them the bleep out of the lineup and just give them an opportunity to get started on the healing process. And there are guys in this lineup that are like we, we saw it today we saw all it. year. Jonas Brodine has been battling things all season. Give him an opportunity to get started on the healing process. Matt Zuccarello left practice today to get treatment on what he has been dealing with at points throughout the season. Give these guys an opportunity to get fully rested up because as we saw, if you don't get fully healthy come the next season, it lingers. Perfect example was Kirill Kaprizov heading into this season. He was still dealing with that injury and it took him until about 25 to 30 games into the season to finally get himself comfortable. And obviously he's been great ever since he's been on a hundred plus point pace ever since he got himself right. That is one piece of this puzzle. And so then 
the players that get shut down and it's four games. It's not going to make a huge difference, but the guys that get shut down, that gives them a couple of weeks to get things started for the off season. And like it just, we now can officially cross off the win at all costs. Um, and you just, you just have to. You just you just have to do it. Like now, I'm getting uh, caught up through the uh, the comments here, but um, that's that's the first thing. Is like you can give Capriz off. You can still give him 20 minutes, but you don't have to extend him to 25, 26. You can still give Brock Faber. 20 minutes a night, but you don't have to give him 26. Yeah. Limit, uh, limit uh, special teams for some of these guys too. I mean, Eck, Eck, he, Eck doesn't have to take every face off. You know? give, give the brother some uh, break. Yeah. Like we just need to, we, we need to use those opportunities to just give players looks like that's the other thing too, is, Four games is not enough to develop a concrete like opinion of particular mm-hmm. players, but it does give you an opportunity. It gives these guys an opportunity to just check where they're at in the process. That's the key is giving these players, these prospects an opportunity to see where they're at in the process so that they can go down and in the off season, they can get stronger They can work on positioning. They can work on their shot. They know what they need to work on going into the offseason so that they can be ready to help next year. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a huge summer ahead. And, uh, you know, for a lot of these guys, a lot of the young guys, too, because what there'll be there'll be a couple of spots in the lineup up for grabs. And, you know, hopefully they can, you know, move around some guys. I mean. They're going to have uh, Mark, to Marcus Johansson is clearly not a, uh, um, you know, a top six player. Um, just he isn't anymore. And so you park him on the fourth line with Freddie Goudreau. Freddie does not need to be in the top nine. So park both of those guys on the, on the fourth line, make, make Freddie be the fourth line center. And then, you know, you have a, a big opening right there in, in <laughs> a friend makes a good point. Was he ever? No. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a left wing spot is going to be a big battle um, in the fall. Um, you know, hopefully Riley Height gets uh, gets a nine game look. Uh, you know, we have Ogren maybe, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's going to be a bunch bunch of guys, young guys, uh, you know, battling for that spot for sure. You can't go into next season with one top line and two pieces of an additional line, but one piece that is just there like second line wing, you know, who played second line wing for the, um, you know, who played second line wing for the Colorado avalanche tonight, (laughs) Valerian (laughs) Ashuskin. An absolute uh, Russian stud. You want to know what he did tonight? And again, like I'm not, I'm not comparing Valerian Ashuskin to, it was a Dallas um, draft pick too. I mean, the Dallas—they never miss. To be fair, let him go. But yeah. he didn't. He is have a maniac too. On, he didn't maniac have any shots on, on goal side. either tonight. So <laughs> what the hell am I talking about? Clearly, clearly it works. If Colorado has a guy on their second line that isn't shooting the puck, Marcus Johansson just needs to be given a, more of an opportunity to establish <laughs> that base on that second line. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's crazy. Really I mean, they... looked at that before I tried to make that comparison because that that ex- just blew up right in my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I had it coming. Yeah. Um, but still, Valerian Ishuskin on the season, he has twenty six goals, twenty four assists. Marcus Johansson doesn't have a third of those numbers. Yeah, it's it's absurd. Uh, they it really is that lineup. You know, I mean, Gorgiev isn't great by by any means. He's he's better than Kemper, but yeah, it's they're just gonna try to steamroll teams and don't let them get on the power play too. It's uh, yeah, you're, novel you're con- a, novel concept. You're you 
you are screwed if you if you uh, you know go on the PK against them, especially in the playoffs. And uh, they they're out for revenge after the way you know they crashed and burned last last playoffs. So yeah, we'll see. They have a lot, a lot better depth. So I want to give Heat Grim a shout out. As a Stars fan, want to thank you for the endless laughs you guys and the Wild provided throughout the season. Love the podcast, um, especially against the Dallas Stars because. The Wild went over there and gave up something like 29 goals in four games and only scored twice. So that's fun. Um, by the way, I love the uh, love the Wii baseball emoji <laughs> so um, picture for Heat Grim. So appreciate appreciate the support, Heat Grim from uh, from another team in the yeah, division. Yeah, thank you. We got people in Dallas watching us. So let's that's awesome. talk about this one because. Here's my stance on this. And the question for those listening, question for those listening, I know Billy seat isn't hot, but should it be just signed a new deal with new president title, but should we be in a GM search? Here is my thoughts on this because Bill Guerin seat should be warm. It should. I'm not going to mince words. It yeah. should be warm because all of this was self-inflicted. Like, and I know a rash of injuries by and large, probably more injuries than many teams normally deal with over the course of the season. But what did that tell us too? Is that the depth, the prospects that were touted as being close to being ready were not. And there was no depth on the roster to fill the spots that were injured. That's a GM problem. Yeah. Lock guys into contract extensions and not being able to move them without directly going to these players to do so that's a gm problem like I'm, this is all self-inflicted i'm more nervous about the defensive prospects than the forward prospects because the forward prospects look like um they're gonna turn out well but you have you have some defensemen down there in iowa that are struggling mightily and i mean carson lambos was a first round draft pick and you don't hear great things no. uh damon hunt uh i mean we love the guy but it for whatever reason he's not trusted um so that that's an issue and you know uh o'rourke i mean none of none of the defensemen seem like they're ready i mean maybe jack pert eventually but uh he had a tough year at st cloud so i mean it's the defensemen are you know that's 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 the struggle and that's where they could go in the first round uh you know the chat's been talking about um you know, um, maybe enough, in, you know, in there. Um, yeah. So, um, and it's like, they're not gonna, they're not gonna tear down house. They're not gonna, they're yeah. not gonna burn this thing down to the studs. Optics is right. But what we have seen happen in the course of one off season is that this team has gone. And this is like, this is not nothing. I I've, I have people on Twitter and hey, let's otherwise. let's not forget that he has no cap negotiator right now either. That yeah. is a nightmare. That has to be solved right away. The fact that they haven't had somebody with on the on the team side of things be the cap person since what December, and now we're April. That that yeah. is a big problem. We can't just rely on the NHL front op, you know, the NHL to to help. They're gonna have to hire an assistant GM that can do contracts they've so like uh i'll i'll piggyback because what hoptics is saying here is is accurate like you you've got you've got a good core to go forward with like caprizov eric Sinek, boldy like that's a good and you know you throw faber in there you can throw rossi in there um you've got good pieces to build around but the problem is is that We've seen this team go to a small roster, a slower roster, an older roster, and a tinier roster. Again, that's all his choosing, right? Like, and your ca your captain, you you, you know, people people just think uh, he's going to come back a hundred percent. No, we don't know that. I mean, when you have no. not only just one surgery, you have two surgeries, and they're on. Two of the most probably the most important body parts for an NHL player, especially the hip, because we've seen guys 
struggle to come back from from hip uh, problems. Ryan Kessler had to retire. Nicholas Backstrom from the Capitals is going to have to retire. He tried to come back and he just said, I, I, I can't do it. Um, so it's, it's, it's really scary, um, especially when he's locked up long-term like that. And the only glimpse of them of, of Spurgeon on skates that we've seen lately is for him taking the team picture. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we've seen. So I get like, I get that team photo is something that happens for every team, but <laughs> the optics of that were not, they were not good. Um, So like, and this, like, this is, again, this is again, why we keep harping on the roster spots for Marcus Johansson and Freddie Goudreau is because if you need, if you need to add size or speed or skill to the lineup, you don't have the luxury to have players on this roster, just taking up space. Like if you need to get bigger, go get somebody that's bigger to fill one of those spots. If you need more speed, go get somebody that has speed to put in the roster and take one of those spots. And like you have locked those guys in to where now you can't for the most part with Johansson, you can't. So that's probably going to have to be a buyout right with Goudreau. It's a, I think a 16 team, no trade, but there just is no scenario in which it should be that. Right. And these teams see the film. They have scouts at every game. Uh, so they are watching these guys and they had nightmare seasons. So that's, it's going to make it really difficult. That's why I keep bringing up Gustafson because there are so many teams that are desperate for a goalie. Look at Philly without Carter Hart. Um, and then Carter Hart's not coming back anytime soon. Uh, he's going to be in yeah. jail by the time, uh, yeah, soon enough. So, uh, they, they need a goalie. San Jose has no goalies. It's crazy. The devils have no goalies. It, you know, there are teams out there that are in big panic mode to, to try to figure out what the heck they're going to do with the most important position. And in that trade, try to get a forward yeah. for Gus. Um, and th- like, this is why, this is why Philip Gustafson has been discussed as much as he has. And why Marco Rossi has been discussed as much as he has is because those guys have value and they mm-hmm. don't have trade protection attached to them. Right. But the point that needs to be emphasized with this is that those are probably the guys that you shouldn't be looking to trade. Just like at the trade deadline, <laughs> guys like Brandon Duhame and Connor Dewar, probably not who you should be looking to move off the roster, but because of everybody else on the roster look at, that's what you have look at to look at what scott scott brings up a good point the flyers gave up nine goals tonight to montreal uh, you yeah, know, they that's... absolutely yeah they ha- have a major goalie problem good point scott yeah i um thank you for keeping an eye on that because i'm i'm trying to bookmark comments here because i'm trying to yeah. like i'm the trying chat's to on fire those... i'm trying to <laughs> yeah. make sure i'm answering or getting getting people's questions out there too. Johansson is blackmail on someone convince me otherwise. Yeah. You know, D what he's doing. I'm going to try to get set to laugh here. He's got the men in black, like the, the pen thing where you zap and you don't remember what, what, what has occurred this season. That's Marcus Johansson. He's um, <laughs> someone. <laughs> if I wanted to be mean, I was going to take a photo with flash on to try to simulate like, but I'm not, I'm not mean. Um, anyway, so Bill Guerin seat and like, let's uh, other side of this coin. The goal for this team, ultimately every season is to make the playoffs. Like that's the goal. Right. And so now that this season has not included a postseason push, Leopold's going to go to Garen and say, Hey, what gives? You told me we were going to be able to make the playoffs even by buying out Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter. And now we haven't done that. And now I'm upset. You know, he's pissed right now because he's not getting going to get that playoff gate. You know, those owners are, they miss out on a ton of money when, yeah. when their team doesn't make the playoffs. Uh, even if it's only a couple home games, that's uh, that's quite a bit of money in, in Craig's pocket. And for, for all the issues of the Minnesota sports teams here, Craig, spends to the cap uh unlike you know the yeah. poll ads um he is he's the opposite of the poll ads 
he he is paying Zach Parisi and Ryan Suter to not be on this team. So that that says a lot as as him as a as an owner. Um, so you know, you know, props to him at least on that. Let's check Minnesota wild record versus central. I know we have San Jose for one of the games and then Minnesota wild versus central division opponents. Um, oh, are you not going to do this? True. In a Karen, nice, um, a nice true. way. Um, well, I'll, that'll be addressed in a future episode. I was hoping that there'd be something that would, uh, Oh, but that's no. Oh God, that Seattle game too. Good point, Sean. It's another, another. One. Oh man, it's Seattle. I, is a too. I hate these stupid. Like Saturday's game against the Sharks is a nine thirty start. <laughs> so just, the the Sharks are so bad. It is when when you're watching games against them and the and the Blackhawks, it's like my goodness. There's guys out there that shouldn't be in the NHL. I mean, it's it, those teams are a nightmare to watch. I, I feel uh, that's painful for the, for those fans. At least the Wild have Kaprizov. From what I'm seeing here, courtesy of something called Stat Muse, they're saying that the Wild are five, six, and two against. Oh, that's on the road. Okay, that's that's why that looked weird. I was like, that that can't be they're nine, fourteen, and three. There we go. Found it. Got it. Nine, fourteen, <laughs> and three against the central division this season. Jeremy, Jeremy Arvard Soderblom. I, I'm not I'm not kidding you. He he's one of the worst NHL goalies I've ever seen. The the Blackhawks goalie from the other day. So I mean that guy is Oh yeah, that, that was guy is so bad. I don't know what what the Blackhawks are thinking, you know, they do, uh, you know, if, uh, there's gopher fans in here, uh, gopher hockey fans, uh, Rob Stauber's, uh, you know, kid, um, you know, is, uh, in, uh, the Chicago ice hogs organization, Jackson Stauber. Um, and he's, he's looked okay when he's played with, with the Blackhawks, he's way better than soda bloom. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing. It's probably just for the tank job, but, uh, he is horrendous, and poor Peter Mrazek. I I think when Mrazek's been in there, uh, you know he's he's looked decent, but that other guy is just just horrendous. Not great. I I'm fully on board with Sean with this. Like the fact that the Wild have to play the Pacific Division for four <laughs> their final four games. Yeah, is, I'm with Sean. It is a nightmare. It's it's, it's hideous. It's bad like, hockey. I mean the. The Ducks, for how much talent that they have, they just, it, it's horrendous. I mean, if they didn't have uh, Vetrano, it, it it's its just, I don't know, it's garbage. Uh, it, they got to get Gibson out of there, too. It's, it's a nightmare. The only, like, the only redeeming quality about playing, for instance, San Jose is just get, guessing which Sharks player is going to score. Um. Uh, Beyond that, like, well, I don't need to. I don't need to see the Kings again. We already know how that plays out. I don't need to see <laughs> Vegas again. Movie. We yeah. usually, we pretty much know how that plays out. Like, <sighs> yeah, Sean. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. They, get Gibson back home to Pittsburgh. That's where he's from. Yeah, he needs. They need to get him. That, get him out of there. Uh, yeah, I don't. The goalie depth. That's going to get really interesting. You know, they. Uh, um, it sounds like Hunter Jones is going to be done with the organization, which is, it's a tough look for him because he was a second round draft pick. So yeah, he just, uh, you know, he couldn't figure it out down there. Yeah. At points he was in the ECHL. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't, it just, I, it seems like he's done. Um, and then they have the, the Slovakian kid and, uh, you know, they signed, uh, um, the best, uh, one of the best goalies in college hockey this season, Kyle McClellan from, uh, from Wisconsin. So looks like, you know, that could be a signal that maybe, you know, either, you know, they think flurries for sure done or, or trade Gus. So, I mean, they do have multiple goalies for, for Iowa next season, uh, ready to go. Well, and you don't, you don't take a dude's tires off of his car 
as a you, you do that to end a prank war with the assumption that there's not going to be any escalation because you're not going to be in the league right like how about that was that a wild thing? move the the <laughs> <laughs> they they uh they talked to do him in the in the locker room today and he said uh the car is still in the shop and then he had to reiterate that it was still in the parking lot so he hasn't he still has his car there it's uh that, that was crazy what a what a way to pull that one off i'm gonna go back to this too because yeah. um a hundred like we we got to keep in mind and i i have not I have not had the ability to dive into all the stuff that was going on, but I, I just am really never going to be in the position to question the buyouts. They had to do it. Buyouts. They had to do it. They had to do it. Even though both of them are still playing, it was time to move on. And Zach, um, you know, at the time when it was happening, it, he was, he was really not in a good spot. And, uh, uh, kudos to him for for turning it around with the with the Islanders, and now it's led to him in Colorado. And you know, if he gets a Stanley Cup ring, kudos to Zach because that man has been a warrior in this league. And yeah, he he paid the price, you know, in front of the net for so many years. He got close with the Devils, you know, just for whatever reason, never worked here. Uh, but you know, if he gets a ring, I'm uh, I'll, I'll be happy for for Zach for sure. The key thing to keep in mind here for, you know, th there is obviously there are many layers to the buyouts. Like, number one, the fact that the NHL retroactively decided we're going to add some penalties here okay. to where if these guys retire before their contracts are done, you get penalized for that. Like that stipulation did not exist when those contracts were signed, but also those two guys had a level of power that you really just should never give to players at any level in any situation. They basically ran, they basically ran the team. Right. And that was allowed to go on way too long. And so when a new general manager comes in, I'm of the belief that if somebody else, if it wasn't Bill Guerin, if some other GM came in here, same thing would have happened. Right. Like it just was, it just was allowed to go on for way too long. Paul Fenton wasn't here long enough to do anything about it. And so when you get a GM that comes in here to actually like start to try to turn the direction, it doesn't matter if it was Bill Guerin, if it was 15 <laughs> other people, if it was let's, Barry Trotz that came in here, he would have done the same thing. Let's get it brings up just a hilarious point that Suter would just bat phone Craig Leopold uh, for anything he didn't like. That is so true. How how absurd was it to everyone that uh, you know that uh, Zach and, and Ryan like brought in Adam Oates to be like a personal like coach too and like a power play guru. That was nuts. Yeah, Braemar practices too. Uh, that that was that was a little crazy. Uh, things were so much different. Yeah, Fenton was Fenton was a nightmare too. Obviously for for everything off the ice and just yeah yeah what wild crazy times. You know that this... he literally Fenton was literally not here even a calendar year. He was here I think eight months, and um like. It, uh, it, I mean, just <laughs> this, uh, you can't make it up with this franchise. They've had no. so much just, just craziness happen. I, I don't think anything will top the assistant GM getting fired this season, though, coming off a road trip. We still don't know what he did. And he was the guy that did all the contracts. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, they need, they need to get that figured out because, you know, uh, someone needs to get paid, uh, Faber this summer. So, Hopefully they get that get that figured out right away. That's gonna be that's gonna be nine. That'll yes. be nine. That'll be nine a season. But um, the the key thing, the a, a, another thing to keep to keep in mind with like these current like the contract predicaments is the salary cap is the salary cap is going to start to raise right. more consistently. Um, so that will be something that will help with uh, 
that'll be one thing that will help. Do you think Fenton was the one person who was willing to go against Craig's attendance fetish? And that's part of the reason he was gone so soon. Um, yeah, I think it was more so to do with the fact that he was just really not a good person in any how sense. he treated, uh, you know, everybody. Um, I mean, I like organization. It's, yeah. I, I like, I like where Cinerary's head is at. Yeah. Like, that's that's kind of that's a nice spin zone for that but um the overarching reason was that fenton was just an asshole right. like by and large yeah he did get the bully you know pick right you know it was bully caulfield caulfield uh caulfield's been great too but uh yeah yeah, that is. Has correction. he really? I don't believe. I don't know. You. They're starting to turn it on. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've I I like the kid. I I you know. I've, yeah, I, I I like Caulfield. He's 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 I got know. twenty-four goals, thirty-six assists, sixty points. Very comparable. He's a little Woody. hobbit. He is Frodo, uh, Frodo of Montreal. But uh, uh, yeah, he's man, five that, eight. That, that kid, that kid can fire the puck though. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine a? Uh, Kaprizov, Rossi, Caulfield line. <laughs> I'd call them the Fellowship of the Puck. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, there it is, the moment of the night. <laughs> we had tramped the last one. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're getting tramped here. Uh, um, the fellowship of the puck. Fellowship of the puck. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, it's uh, eight and a half by five, or maybe seven. It's going to go up. I mean, he he's seen all of what you know some of these other defensemen are getting, and he's going to want that. Uh, he's going to want Capri soft numbers for sure. Um, I'm not going to push you on this too much Hoptics, but Freddie is not the only like the Johansson deal was given with the pretense that he was going to be anywhere near where he was at at the end of the season. And Honestly, like there just was no there just was no reason to gamble on having to attach trade protection to that extension in order to keep him here. If you're if you end up if he ends up getting more money from somebody else. I sorry, sorry we uh sorry we can't give you what you're <laughs> looking for to stay here. We'll uh we'll let you go take something somewhere else. But you know, Garen has been good. Billy's been good in the trade department for sure. Like he has, he has made some very shrewd, very good trades for this team. Um, I, I'm just not of the belief. Getting Greenway these extensions. That was yeah. That, that Greenway one. The fact that Buffalo agreed to that. That was that. Yeah, that was unbelievable. And uh, you know. Fiala, you know, to get a Faber, you had to, you know, um, you know, Fiala was the other casualty. So, I mean, that that's in the long run, I think that's really going to work out for, you know, 18 play. points in 20 games with Boldy somehow. Um, I, I still, I still don't know. How yeah. That <laughs> <is> like. <laughs> was he attached at the hip? Yeah. Just <laughs> he's like one of those. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Marcus Marcus Johansson is Marcus Johansson is Troy Williamson. He oh, has <laughs> great speed. He has the ability to hit the home run, but he can't catch. Like Johansson has good speed. He has the ability to hit the home he's run. Al he's allergic to shooting the puck. He can't he just, uh... shoot at all. Yeah, they he should get a you know what he should get. You know, we talk about NIL money for college, you know, he should get a sponsorship from Lifetime Fitness. You know, him and the <laughs> the cardio boys can can get get some workouts uh you know going. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> oh man, the chat I, is I on fire. I can't dispute that. I can't. I can't dispute that because that's accurate. He just. He we just have compared didn't... them. We have compared them to Troy Williamson. We call him the Cardio Boys. I've called him Rand, R- Randy Dobnak. <laughs> oh boy, we need a Timberwolves comparison. Like, <laughs> oh Chase Buttinger? I don't know some. You know, like Rosho you know, Nesterovich. Yeah, Rosho. Oh, Luke boy. Rittenauer. No, Ros- uh, no, no, Rosho no, no, no. Nesterovich. I think a good comp for him would be Greenway. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Alex- remember Alexi Shred? Makes me, just Shreddy makes balls. Me, just makes me sad. Like, um. Yeah, Sean, we're all we are all on this ledge. Right. We're all on this ledge right now. But this is why, like, this is why I keep talking about um, Randy Foy. <laughs> this is why I keep talking about like feeling like there is a course correction trade coming. Is because all these little things, all these little things are starting to line up. Like you didn't make the playoffs this year. If that's your overarching goal as a franchise. You're going to do something to get there next year. You got all these guys with trade protection that can block trades for the most part, unless they get sent somewhere where there's not enough of a return to make it worth your while. Um, And the fact that the guys that have value are on the younger side. And so I will like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull the, I'm not going to pull the fire alarm and say like, it's time to it's time to march down to the XL Energy Center and start like demanding people clear out their desks. But this is how like this is the slope that starts this kind of thing mm-hmm. is the course corrections for winning now that impacts winning later. And this is a team that just the way that they're structured, they have a perfect alibi to not win now, but there is just no acceptance of that. And so the only thing that you have left on the table is to course correct. And that usually comes at the result of um, a young player, a pick or a prospect. Can you put up Mike's comment? Oh, we got uh, Tokyo here. We got a. We, we have a a, we have Japan on the board. Japan, thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Really appreciate. It. That's that's so cool. I it's it, it's so cool seeing new spots around the world. Uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. And you know, again, I'll, I'll go back. Like, cause this is, this is another good point is that the expectations just need to be lower, but we're, we're in that, we're in that, we're in that vein right now. Yeah. Um, like we, we're not expecting, like I, I, at this, at the beginning of the season, all the way back to the beginning of the season, I'll pull the audio. I, I said that it was going to be very tough. I massively undersold how good Winnipeg was. Like I very massively undersold how good they were, but it said at the beginning of the season, it was going to be tough for this team to make the playoffs with the constraints that they have. And the thing that gets frustrating is just the amount of times that there just has been the continued running the head into the wall. Like we're not, we're not expecting this team to win the Stanley cup this year or next year, but what we want to see is some progress to, some life energy, you know, <laughs> some progress to yeah. what is coming next instead of just continuing to try to repeat the same thing that is just not, it's just not feasible. We, we see it play out against Dallas, against Colorado, against Winnipeg. They're just the, the wild are just not in that league this year and that's okay. But you, you need to try to build towards getting to that level at yeah. some point. And you're not going to get there by continuing to give Marcus Johansson 18 minutes a night for him to just continue to skate around yeah. and be the Kenny Vargas <laughs> of the Minnesota Wilds or be the Marquise Gray 
Um, <laughs> Someone said Scott Baker, and that almost, that made me almost <sighs> moonshot Scott Baker. Remember him? Oh, man. How much does staying competitive the next two years have to do with convincing Capriz off to say? Probably a large oh, 100%. portion of it. Yeah, that's one of the a best large questions. large portion Sean. of it. Yeah, because, you know, he's he's it's absolutely killing him that he's not going to be in the playoffs. And these Russian guys, they are the ultra competitive against. They want to be the best Russian you know, Kaprizov sees what, uh, you know, uh, you know, what, what all the rest of the Russians are doing out there, uh, Panarin and just Kucherov. I mean, he's really close with Bobrovsky too. I mean, these, these guys are really just killing it. Uh, and you know, he, he's going to be disappointed. But the other part of the, the other part of the dialogue and it is a dialogue. It has mm -hmm. to be a dialogue with a player like this. The other part of the dialogue is to tell him, yeah, it's not it's not the best at this point. Like it's we we struggled this year. Injuries, so many players just continuing to to hop into the penalty box at will. But those guys in the future, Yurov, who's Nadinov, Ugrin. It, that though that wave of prospects that's what you sell him on is that right. these are going to be the guys who are going to be the difference coming. makers but this is where we have the disconnect right is because and they're not here now obviously but when they get here you have to give them opportunities yeah. to show that they're really that they're ready to take those spots that's you're where off. we have the the separation between the plates, the 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 space between the tectonic plates right now. Yeah, I mean that every, key right there. Everything that you see from your off, he looks like he's gonna be a, a, a you know just a freaking stud, and now uh, that's that's gonna be interesting to see if they can get him over because if they can get him over, you give him a legitimate chance to to get into that top six role. And how? <sighs> How are we still at the point, unless it happened and I just I just missed it? How are we at the point where Yurov still has not signed? It's crazy, extension? you know, you know, but you know, it's like everything over there. It it seems to change, you know, daily. Um, and uh, yeah, I I don't believe I I don't want like there are um there are some accounts out there on the old X machine. That just, that just, I don't even like that has weird connotations to it saying that. Right. The old Twitter machine. Yes. Um, Twitter for life. There are some accounts out there that are putting stuff out there that are saying like he's already signed. It's a done deal. But then like you don't hear anything about it. So I. And he's literally Instagram messaging with Russo saying I haven't yeah. signed yet. And so these accounts are saying. That's the one I believe. Yeah, exactly. On Instagram through, you know, it's, <laughs> they, there has, whatever that one account is saying that like the Russian prospects account, he hasn't officially signed when Russo is com communicating with them directly. Um, Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about who's he. Let's get our who's yeah. update. Uh, because oh, where did it go? Oh, and there's a good one about the Iowa coaching staff too. God, there's some good question. Uh, the chat is on fire tonight. We love. Might to see be a two-hour postcast tonight. But and uh, we've got 81 people in here right now, so why not? Uh, thoughts on who's Nadina? <laughs> Kieran, Kieran knows. I I love. I know that Kieran's on on my side. The chat. I'm I'm glad we're making the chat laugh too. Um, who's going to end up being a better player next year? That was a very poorly timed who's Nadinoff uh, <laughs> pun. Murat, who's Nadinoff or Marcus Johansson? <laughs> Murat, I mean, he at least, uh, Murat shows some life out there. He's winning face-offs. He's a vibes guy, you know. Uh, you know, he seems like a really, uh, you know, character, those Russians, uh, um, all the, you know, they just are great sound bites. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I died when he did the one, two face-offs in a row. Woo. Ooh, great. <laughs> Congrats. Like dude gets it. 
And, you know, part of it, too, part of it, too, tonight, I was initially irritated seeing him only get um, only get under 10 minutes tonight. I think it was nine something. You know, let's let's consider two. Mm -hmm. Let's consider two. You're playing the Avs. Colorado is a very deep team. They're playing at home. And so there is part of there is part of the equation of trying to protect some of these young guys too. Mm -hmm. Hear me out on this. Sure. Hear me out on this. In a game like this against a just juggernaut, and you're very clearly a um you're very clearly the under skilled team in these two. You could have played who's Nadinoff and Shaw and Letary for 15 minutes tonight. But guess what Jared Bednar is going to do to combat that? He's throwing the McKinnon line out there. Always. Like, yeah. and so part of the dance, part of the dance, especially tonight, is just understanding that there are some games where you are just going to try to make sure that young players don't get embarrassed poor, out there. Poor Mason Shaw, by the way. My goodness. Holy buckets. Yeah. His ribs have got, if they weren't broken, my goodness, that was, oh, uh, Freddie, Freddie, can you bring up Freddie's question? If my mouse would work correctly. <laughs> so Freddie, uh, he just went in the transfer portal and he uh, is going to Michigan state now. And so, the hope is, you know, he's back with his uh, national development team coach and Adam Nightingale. Um, that's who coached him for, you know, uh, you know, when he was in junior there. Um, and the hope is that they, he can get something, you know, out of him that, you know, Granado couldn't or Hastings. Um, you know, it's it's a really tough look after two years to not show any improvement. And to get cut from the world junior team, that that's a tough look too. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. This is a huge year for him. You know, if he doesn't improve, then you know it's 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 getting really really dicey for him. You know, you know being on the NHL team, which would be a tough look as a first round draft pick. And this is where we have to remember for the for the draft, go with the best player available, which was Gabe Perot. Even if he doesn't have the size Strammel does, you go with the guy that is more skilled, more talented. You just don't. <laughs> that's that's perfect. And, you know, that's the face I made when he got drafted. I was like, I watched Strammel when, when he was his, that year against the Gophers, and the Gophers just toyed with him. And he looked nothing like a first-round draft pick. So, you know, they got enamored by the size and Perot was right there. So that was, that was tough, but that, that face is hilarious. Yeah. This is me. This is me sitting on my phone, pulling up memes while you're talking about uh, <laughs> Charlie Strammel. Like I'm just, I've watched this guy. Yeah. Now you guys know how big of a college hockey person I am. And I, you know, I've seen him up close and it just, uh, I, I, I don't see where they thought he was a first round draft pick. It just, uh, yeah. But like Freddie mentions, you're off. I mean, they've uh, they've hit some home runs too, um, you know, and so especially in the second round. But you're off. It looks like the real deal for sure. You guys ever just scroll through your phone and look at what you have just in the <laughs> hopper for memes? <laughs> oh, don't go dim. Oh, that, that battery's at seventeen percent. That's probably not a great thing. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Who's second around? round, Judd. We should just uh, say, yeah, Judd. Well, uh, every every pick is a second round pick. So, what is this? <laughs> I hope I'm not putting anything on the screen that's inappropriate. But who who? Why yeah. do we have Osama in the chat? Now? I don't what know. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> Um, is he speaking some dune language? Hey, this is, I felt this, I felt this after McKinnon scored his second goal of the night tonight. Um, I mean, he, he put on the afterburners. It looked like the Acme, you know, coyote. It was, that was nuts. 25 miles an hour. 
just just insane. And I mean, he was looking, he was making Jonas Brodin look foolish, which is crazy. Yeah, there are a lot of people. Wobbly pops, oh man. <laughs> uh, just one, just huh? one, just one tonight. I mean, um, uh, Charles, if you take a look at it, height is, uh, I mean, he's dominating, uh, the WHL just absolutely dominating. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like he's, uh, more of a, even more of a playmaker than, than Beckman would be. Um, <laughs> is that Shaq. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Shaq is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Butchergrass isn't great as an announcer. I mean, he's good for the game of hockey. Uh, but, uh, if if you guys are college hockey fans too, you saw Bouchergras do uh, do announcing for um, you know for for the college hockey tournament too. It's it's a nightmare. Um, but you know he's a good promoter of the game, so you know that's that's good. So um, and then you got Leah Hextall rocking the Princess Leia costume. Um, yeah, I don't know how Leah 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 Hex, Hextall <laughs> is getting getting these. These gigs. It's, it is it's funny crazy. because ESPN put all of um all of their eggs into the basket of getting the NHL, and it doesn't look like they, they can't figure out the audio still no, too. The audio stuff is just uh, what, me it, nuts. Uh, it's a uh, it's a nightmare. Uh, I mean, you're the worldwide leader, supposedly. Me listening when the audio issues are bad. <laughs> yes, our second Lord of the Rings reference. <laughs> Um, oh. I am a huge fan of both Jamie Hirsch and Audra Martin yeah, optics. They're both like, great. Our, I, friend, um, our friend Alexis is great too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am a huge fan of, of all of those, all of those wonderful women. Um, we'll have Alexis on again as we get closer to the, um, PWHL playoffs, which is coming up in May. Oh, Alaskan Wampa brings up. I love Kevin Weeks. Though. Kevin Weeks is Kevin, elite. His his uh his breaking news updates are just uh just amazing. Yeah, it's uh yeah he's you know he has unique content and uh yeah he's he was he was an awesome goalie too. Me trying to figure out where Kevin Weeks is tre- tweeting breaking news from. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Jamie, look at look at some of the people that have graduated off of uh FSN Bally's. Uh you got Jamie in the NHL network. Um and also um who am I forgetting? <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this <laughs> Matt point. Dumba. Yeah. Everybody everybody should just it's kind of therapeutic. Just go mm-hmm. through and just look at all the memes that they have on their phone. It's especially therapeutic after a game like this. Um Freddie, watch out for Denver. Denver was my pick. I put a tweet out there as like I said Denver's gonna win uh win the uh you know the frozen four. I just think Watch out for uh, David Carl too. He's the coach of Denver. I think he's going to be an NHL coach very soon too. So, um, oh, there was a, yeah. Here's the trick: turn Joe Donnell and Tom Reed on, and you actually get good audio. Joe yeah, Donnell, Joe's, Joe's Joe's phenomenal. I love when Joe and Tom uh, they make uh, uh, you know funny jokes. Yes, Sean, I was thinking of Jenny Taft. Sorry, Jenny's big time. Jenny is uh, does. Uh, uh, the Saturday college fo- football games on, on Fox with Gus Johnson and, and Clatt. She's, she's elite. Uh, she was done dealing with, uh, um, you know, uh, Shannon's, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of, why am I blanking on our guy, uh, that does the FS1 show? So skip Bayless. <laughs> yeah, she was done. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I don't yeah, even Jenny, know why Jenny I have that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's a brilliant meme. Come to a Locked on Wild postcast for the breakdown of the game. Stay for me just scrolling through my memes. phone memes. Yeah, McKinnon could play three on five and still beat our team today. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah. What is this? What's what that happening? Do you have what the thumb one on too? Oh, oh this. Yes, I wait for you. Do. Wait till everybody sees the thumb one. No, no. Now we're getting in. We're getting into the pre beard photos, and I've been meaning to delete all of these because <laughs> it's just it's not it's not great. 
Seth Middleton. <laughs> people, people, the chat is calling you Seth Middleton. <laughs> I mean, with that fake mustache, yeah. certainly, although still not even close to what uh, what Middleton is able to do. Um, let's see if I have any more good ones. Otherwise, we'll kind of start. How about, I mean, how about McKinnon fifth. like reviving uh, Jonathan Druin too? I mean, he was basically pretty much out of the league, and he's like, yeah, I want to get the guy I played with in junior, and he's, uh, yeah. A young Krill. Yeah, that's a young uh, Krill. I, I feel like a lot of us had that uh, that face. Uh, Kieran, I I I don't even want to put it on screen pre beard shots of me because it's it is it is it's jarring. It's very jarring, and it's something that I don't even like to entertain as a possibility. Remember this one? Yes, that. <laughs> I loved using the the Shrek. Oh no. man, classic! Who is the NHL player who could pull off the full mutton chops? Uh, well, Brandon I mean, Duham could. Yeah, Middleton for sure. Uh, you know, a guy that I would love to see um, is uh, Ekholm in uh, Edmonton, the Swede. I think Victor Hedman could do it too. Uh, they, those guys, you know, just just Swedish, you know, just um, Bogosian. Like Bogosian's got kind of the mullet going on right now. Yeah, he's now. got crazy hair. He's that's a, that's a guy you do not want to see in a dark alley. I mean, he no. is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Shrek will. It was Mike Mike Myers for life. For that. Are we um, bullish on Uger? And I, you know, yeah, just just we'll as see. kind of a quick slot into the middle six guy, I very much am on yeah. Uger. And I know his. Uh, I know some of his world juniors tape it wasn't great last year um this year was better from uh from what i heard and uh yeah we're that he's always gonna be linked with jimmy snuggerud because you know <laughs> they were right there um and you know the the wild could have you know taken jimmy but they decided not to so like, guys i have the perfect solution to fix the minnesota wilds physicality problem yes. these three right here trailer park boys let me know if you're with me let me know if you're with me i think those three could uh, absolutely absolutely solve the physicality problem which wild player were scored scored the first michigan goal i mean it's got to hmm. be Kirill, right yeah or i mean or do we put that with Yurov and have that be his uh, his debut goal? Yeah, it what seems like Yurov 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 has got that type of skill. I think he could he could do it. Uh, that doesn't seem like Krill's vibe, but the wild season, it's all ogre now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant, Will! Brilliant, brilliant. <sighs> people, if people ask me, like, how do I do this? after games um this is how a like, goose extension oh my god no could you imagine that no 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 oh my god. no no movement no goose is 38 right now if he got five more how years. about we just how about we just start putting movement clauses in people's right. contracts Let's just start putting movement clauses. Oh, remember Sean? Sean brings up the Grandland point too. Um, the cool Michigan. Uh, they put remember guys. Remember they put Grandland on a stamp over there in Finland too. Oh my goodness, that was yeah, that was. It's crazy. Grandland is uh, you know, is now in San Jose, kind of where guys go to die right now. Um, I like this point by Cinerary too about um, because Kaprizov. I at one point thought he broke Hellebuck's mask because he got him once like right here, once like right here. And then he tried to get one off like the side of the top of his head um, to the point where I saw Hellebuck kind of go like this, like, dude, you gotta, you gotta stop. But that's like, that's his thing. Like, remember the Ville Husso goal in the postseason off the back of his head? That was the postseason, right? Or was that just a regular season game? Regular, yeah, regular season. But still, to do that, like, come on, that's that's just a level of skill that I 
will never have right. that Marcus Johansson will never have that. Um, You're right, Kieran. I just, I feel bad for Gremlin because it's just, uh, it's a nightmare, but. Stammer. That's crazy. They, the, the fact that he's done so much for the Tampa Bay organization and the fact that they, they didn't come to an agreement yet that, that that's tough. That's really tough. You know how that makes me feel. He is from he is from the Toronto area, but they can't afford him. So, yeah. Oh, if he goes to Toronto, how huh, that's gonna be? <laughs> that'll be something. Yeah, Freddie. It's possible they can get the first pick, but they have to get in the lottery. If they don't get in the lottery, then then they can't. So they they're close to it, but they got to get in there. Yeah. This like. Ooh, working on getting custom emotes in the server. Oh, my services are being asked for. <laughs> oh yeah, um, Ren, I will, uh, I will empty my phone uh, into the Discord server because I've got just a preposterous amount. Seth, can you bring can you bring up Tankathon quick and see yes. where how close we are to the lottery? The Minnesota Wilds I already ran it once, and we are in 13th okay. right now. So we are um, we are in by three slots. Washington is currently the first team out. They've got 85 points, but the teams that we I the teams that we're in the mix with, obviously um, Philadelphia, Detroit, Pittsburgh. And St. Louis. Um, so basically, just keep losing. <laughs> yeah. Now that now now that it's official, yeah. You know that San Jose game will be tough to win, but or to, tough to lose. But <laughs> well, see, you say that, yes. but we did lose. We did nearly lose to them once, and we lost to the Ducks once, and we lost to Buffalo twice, and we lost to. Uh, Yes, we would take Celebrine in a heartbeat, in an absolute heartbeat. Uh, Jeremy, watch him. Uh, they play on Thursday, Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, it's at the X, so could be his future home. But he's he came in a year early at Boston. He uh, um, accelerated his education, and so he did his junior and senior year of high school together so that he was able to to go to Boston early, which is just crazy. And the second pick or like third pick, you know, Iserman uh, uh, is going to Boston next year. So that's crazy. Um, Celebrini would be the second best player on the team. No, without uh, he's better than Boldy. Yeah, he is an unreal. <laughs> Sounds like nerd <laughs> pass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't. Need, <laughs> we don't need any nerds on no. on this team. Uh, the guy that's probably going to win the Hobie Baker. <laughs> oh, that that was good, John. That was good. <laughs> Jeremy, too hard pass. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean Celebrini, just uh, it's it's amazing. I uh, just destroyed the Gophers. Poor Dino. Where do we think Dean goes? Ottawa I mean, right now, I think they're co that Jocks Martin guy. I think he's like seventy one. I mean, yeah. there's no Mark, way eh? he's not get get Dino in there. Yeah, Dean would be a good fit there. Um, I wonder, I wonder which way Los Angeles is going to go if they keep their yeah, interim be, guy. Yeah, that'd be a good spot for him. I like David Quinn in San Jose. He's, I mean, but they just, I don't know. It's. Uh, it's that's that's tough. Um, here's an outside the box. Oh, Columbus too. Oh yeah, Columbus is. We a, talked they, about that before. Yeah, yeah. Columbus would be. Columbus is. I feel like needed. Yes, they for, need. They need so much help. Yeah. Yeah, because he's not going to try to look through players' phones, right? Like Mike Babcock <laughs> did. Yeah, we aren't getting a new coach. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Hines is the right guy, but they gave him like four years. Yeah, so he's not. They, I Craig doesn't want to pay, have to pay for Dean Hines and another a third coach. That would, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, even though I don't know if Hines is the guy, but uh, it's they're kind of stuck with him now. 
me looking through my phone at memes <laughs> at one one o'clock in the morning. Yes, Ren. He looked. Oh yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made he made players give their phones to him and put on like a projection screen. Super normal, right? Like yeah. super normal thing. And we would have never known that unless you know Paul Bizanet and the Spin Chicklets didn't talk about it on the podcast. So, I mean. They they saved uh yeah you know, it's just been a nightmare for Columbus all season. You have all the Patrick Line stuff and fans saying idiotic stuff. Yeah, it's just been it's been crazy. Players saying yes to giving their phone to Mike Babcock <laughs> and then realizing what they have on their phone. <laughs> yeah, Ren. Mike Babcock uh, is a weird dude. Remember yeah. in Toronto, he made uh you know all those guys like say like who they think was like the worst player on the team and stuff. And just like, just absurd stuff. Yeah. Just, we yeah, just... will never like that's leave that to leave that to locked on wild to just like do that yeah. without asking people. That's why Mike Babcock should never be, you know what he did, you know, to, you know, Mike Madonna too. He scratched him. So he wouldn't get 1500 games too. Yeah. Just... That that's, that stuff is, that yeah. stuff's terrible. Um, yeah, Kieran, that was interesting. I can't believe that Quinville Quinville was on the like the um, St. Louis Blues guy pod podcast. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, that guy. He's he's done a lot of you know he let let a lot of stuff go in Chicago. That's really it, really unforgivable. It does really feel like the uh, redemption tour started there, which the fact that that word is even being associated is with crazy. Joel Quenneval is yeah. bad. Yeah. It's... Um, I've got one more, and then I think we'll probably start to wrap. Um, <laughs> we should pay for four coaches like the Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is on fire. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, they were just. I mean. They they hired that Griffin guy and he didn't even make it halfway through the season. Then they brought in Doc. <laughs> Me when I dressed up as Ron Swanson for Halloween. Uh, yeah, Freddie. Uh, not I brought, a real I mustache. Up, uh, Freddie, I brought up Beginla's name before that in the chat. Uh, uh, that would be you know his dad Jerome just killed the Wild, so that would be uh, that makes everybody feel old in here. I'm sure seeing Aginla having a kid be a. Uh, his kid being a first round draft pick already. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Give me all of the bacon and eggs you have. <laughs> uh, this, this completely, this completely derailed, but Hey, where else <laughs> dropping some bars, MC, MC tuple. Oh my God. <laughs> where else can you pop in? Um, where else can you hop in and You're start by breaking down a game <laughs> and then an hour and a half later you're talking about memes on phones that's what sets locked on wild apart is that we are fully capable of pivoting to anything anything Hughes or Faber coin flip oh, Quinn Hughes right what Hughes that the fact that that family has three family members in the NHL. Howard Hughes. <laughs> Bill Hughes. Yeah, I'll take Bill Hughes. Bill Hughes. Uh, you want to talk about a moonshot with the twins? Oh. Balls would fly out of target field. He gave up a ton of home runs. But oh man, what was that Luke. dark star line? If Liriano's slider was was working. You knew you were going to have a good day, and if not, get all the women and children out of the first fifteen rows in left field. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll still take Faber because I think Faber's better defensively. Uh, yeah. Moon Hughes. <laughs> Hughes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Hughes versus Pitlick's battle royale. <laughs> oh man! Which wild player would win Royal Rumble for the wrestling fans? Uh, Bogosian. Yeah, probably. But honestly, that that's a scary dude. I would. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say Flurry because okay. 
Um, I'm going to say it's Flurry scary. because props, pranks. He would pull the announcer bell off the table, and when Bogosian had his back turned, he would get it, and then he'd hit him in the head with it and knock him out. <laughs> Yeah, flower flurry <laughs> flurry would a hundred percent win. How about Cinerary? Uh Scott Baker was a health and safety risk <laughs> to left field. <laughs> uh, oh. um honestly, obscure Minnesota Twins players is one of my favorite things. It's the best ever. It's, the best. it's like that tweet that's like all guys want talk talk about is like old, like you know, sports stats or like Boof Bonzer. Like, Wow, what a name drop. Matt Lee Croy. Pat Maroon is the bit. I guess Pat Maroon yeah. would be a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Who's the wild stone cold? And don't say we traded him. It was Brandon. John Hines is Brandon Lex Duham. Yeah. Brandon Duham was Stone Cold. I said I said I said this on Twitter um, stone yesterday. Cold. I said uh, Brandon Duham would be the number one candidate to stare into the eclipse. <laughs> Without glasses on, <laughs> he would look directly oh. into the eclipse. <laughs> the big oh. oh my god! Um, just watch Jay Cave with a diving catch in Denver tonight. He also watched. The- <laughs> Third strike go by to end. I think Jake Cave was like the last out of oh. the World Series, too. Yeah, just oh boy. <laughs> <Do> we <laughs> probably am I blind? Yes, After Ren. definitely going blind from staring at the eclipse. Oh. Uh, Lou Ford was a great obscure Minnesota Twins player, too. I think he like as of last year, he He's was still, still playing, playing, which is bananas. Yeah, he in Japan, like <sighs> that guy. He was playing independent ball too. Yeah. Zenon can okay. So remember he had go- a pet pet rabbit too, Kanapka. If we're going like if we're going like all time wild roster, um Derek Bugard has to be one of the Hardy yeah. brothers, right? Maybe yeah. this are, do we have do we have a large amount of of wrestling fans in here? I I used to dabble. I was a huge <laughs> Undertaker fan way back in the day, which is why I got the hood. Um, Dumbo. maybe that would be something. Ooh, uh, oh, one of the Dudley boys. That's a that feels right. That feels like a good comp. <laughs> Dumble was the rock, even made his heel turn this year. Bugard and John Scott equals Jeff and John Scott. We're gonna have to do we're gonna have to do this this offseason. We're gonna have to do a crossover, like who would be who. Um we're we're gonna we're gonna hit on some fun stuff, but obviously, as everybody knows who has been following along with this team, there's a lot of work. There are a lot of big questions to uh, to ask. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's got to be John Merrill, right? No, hundred percent. Spike Dudley. It's yes. got to be John Merrill. Johnny Merrill. <laughs> He'd be the one that would climb up to the top of the ladder and get hit in the back with the kendo stick and uh is 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 like leg would get trapped and yeah okay we're gonna do we're gonna do a wrestling episode like this is too good the worm oh man oh my oh my god (laughs) yeah we're gonna do a we're gonna do a wrestling episode but uh folks i i i gotta go to bed like i've got a i've got a bit of an early uh early morning but this has been just the joy like imagine with how that game played out. Right. And again, it's it wasn't like a huge it was against Colorado. We kind of figured that would be how that would play out. But in my wildest dreams, I did not think <laughs> that we would spend 90 minutes breaking the game down. I would go 3 into 3 p.m. in Tokyo. 3 p.m. in Tokyo sounds like a Drake song. Yeah. 
I would. I didn't think I would go into a meme check here. We <laughs> talked some wrestling. We had Troy Williamson, Randy Dobnik. Yeah. I saw Greg Patteron in the in the chat. I, I that was a blast from the past. Scott Baker. I mean, we had some all Lou Ford. Just oh man. I am I am absolutely Jim Ross in all this. <laughs> well, somebody stop the damn match. <laughs> That's not a good impression. But... We're gonna be some new faces next year on the squad, Freddie. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, fill the thrill, Kessel. <laughs> um, Y'all need Jesus, Bob says. Fill the thrill, Kessel. Now, I this is a good question because it feels like, um. um yeah, may, possibly Riley Height. Uh, um, I mean, we've seen Damon Hunt, but I don't know if he's going to make it or not. Yeah, we'll see. I, I think uh, Mermis is probably gone. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see on that. Goligoski's gone. So, yeah, it's uh... it's more frowned upon optics in episodes. Um, the fact that we're at a we're on a ninety minute live stream. <laughs> like sometimes I go a little more off the cuff. We try to be careful. Yeah, but ep regular episodes when most of the uh, regular listenership is tuning in is is when we. Uh, I don't think Denny would like in. that. <laughs> if you guys know Denny, Demetrius Underwood. Is oh my god, we... <laughs> Pascal! Oh my god, I haven't heard that name in so many moons. Remember, Demetrius just went AWOL. That yeah. was that was crazy. Um, I think that is a huge trade in our favor <laughs> is future. Remember, it was like, it was like they, when it was like when, uh, Anaheim just took Kulikov off, uh, the wild's hands. That was, that was unbelievable. Who is somebody who consistently loses in, um, WWE, uh, um, gets beat our truth. Yeah, I mean, just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, all right, we a blast again, and uh, tell your friends because yeah. this is what you can expect pretty much every Locked on Wild postcast. And folks, thanks everybody. I mean, worldwide, we had people in Russia, Japan. Yeah, just just amazing. Um, just because the regular season is ending doesn't mean we go all we, we go all off season everybody yeah thanks mike gonna, for watching we're going to continue the Listening. content but we're also going to continue to do some of these i'll mix these in maybe while uh the playoffs are going on do just a watch party hang out like we're we're not going to cut the postcasts out of the equation just because the regular season is done because this is a huge part of the uh equation wait i mean we got the draft too the draft is gonna be exciting everybody this is you know uh, going to be really fun. We'll have to do something for that too. Ooh, good call. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's going to wrap it for tonight's locked and wild postcast. We hope we provided Thanks, you Bob. with an endless supply of laughs here tonight <laughs> after the wild were officially Thanks, eliminated. Thanks Sean postseason contention. The work begins <laughs> tomorrow. Um, Yes, I have heard that the Wild have accumulated <laughs> additional picks. Hey, JJ looking... McCarthy played hockey growing up, so <laughs> maybe Drake May played hockey too. <laughs> oh yeah, we uh, we're all in, Tyler. We uh, we go all in or all year. So we got a lot coming up. So yeah. thanks, folks. Thanks for joining thanks, us, Matt. Make sure to uh, to hit the like button thanks, and subscribe. So you don't miss out on any future episodes. We got you covered Thanks, with Wampa. new content every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.